Welcome to the Free Pilot Training Channel. We're doing a really quick run up and then I'm going to go show you how to do some power off stalls. Today I got my father-in-law Mike with me. He's going to be doing some of the filming today. He just recently earned his private pilot certificate and he's going to be doing our takeoff in this video. Benita traffic, Skyhawk 314 at X-ray, departing 17 from Benita. Airspeed's coming alive, we've got oil pressure, temp's not up there yet, suction's good. Alrighty. On our way out to the practice field today, there's a couple things I want to talk about real quick. The main thing is that anytime you practice any kind of stalls, you should plan to end the maneuver no lower than 1,500 feet AGL. So the first thing you need to know when you're practicing stalls is your ground elevation. Mine just so happens to be 600 feet MSL today. So now just add your ground elevation there to 1,500. Then I usually add another 300 feet because that's about how much altitude I lose when I'm performing stalls. So today I need to start my stalls no lower than 2,400 feet MSL. All right, so right now we're climbing up to 3,000 MSL. A uh, good rule of thumb for power off stalls and stalls in general is that you want to end the maneuver no lower than 1,500 feet AGL. So the elevation in this area is around 600. So 3,000 is a good safe number to uh, start at. You usually want to start out stalls uh, from slow flight. Uh, it's good use of energy management. And uh, so we'll usually get configured for slow flight and then we'll do our stalls. But in this case, I'm not going to do slow flight first. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the complete setup. Usually what I like to do in that case is run the whole before landing flow. And then uh, we'll do the stalls from there. Let's go ahead and do our before landing checklist to start our power off stalls. Now the reason you want to do this is because we're simulating a stall in the landing configuration. So let's act like we're getting ready for a landing. Alright, seat belts on, fuel sector valve on both. We're already in the wide arc. Keeping my heading of north 360. Now that our airspeed's in the wide arc, let's go ahead and start lowering the flaps. Fighting against it, fighting against it. Still going full flaps. There's the full flaps. Extra full ridge, throttle set, carb heat on, landing and taxi lights on. All right, now that we've got the before landing checklist complete, that means we have full flaps and we're completely configured for landing. Now I'll talk about how we're going to perform this maneuver. This is basically going to be a two-step process. First, we'll induce a stall, then we'll recover the aircraft. To induce a stall, the first thing we'll do is go to idle power on the throttle. Then, to simulate a landing, we'll briefly pitch for our landing speed, in my case, that's 60 knots. Once we reach our landing speed, gently pitch the nose of the aircraft up to the horizon. And with the nose of the aircraft on the horizon in this configuration, it will stall. Some instructors will have you raise the nose of the airplane up above the horizon, but this can make it difficult to control the airplane. Throughout this maneuver, we're trying to keep the ball centered while still maintaining our heading. By keeping the ball in the center, that means we're maintaining coordinated flight. And we do that by stepping on the ball and this allows us to move the rudders of the aircraft, which align the tail with the aircraft's direction of flight. Next, the Airman Certification Standards say that during this maneuver, you need to keep your airplane within 10 degrees of your intended heading. And we do this by the use of ailerons. That being said, you're going to notice that at slow air speeds, your ailerons are not going to have much control authority. That means they won't be quite as effective as the rudder. And because of that, you'll need to use ailerons and rudder to keep your heading during power off stalls. Before we talk about the recovery, let's talk about stall indications. First, we have the stall warning system, also known as the horn. Then, we have wing buffeting. As I mentioned in my video on stalls, a stall occurs when the airflow is disrupted over the surface of the wing. And oddly enough, you can actually feel this turbulent air while inside the aircraft. To me, it kind of feels like little elephants on the upper surface of the wing. Now these are initial stall warnings, but if you have a sudden loss of lift, this means your aircraft is in a full stall. Now on your check ride, your examiner may have you recover the aircraft at the first indication of a stall, but most likely he's going to have you enter a full stall before you start your recovery procedures. And you should practice these as much as possible because these will be the hardest of the three. To recover the airplane, I use the following memory aid. Max, relax, roll. As soon as the airplane stalls, we need to apply maximum power immediately. Next, relax the backstick pressure on the yoke. Not too long ago, the recovery procedures for all stalls have changed just a little bit. 
Originally, you would only release enough backstick pressure to keep the airplane from fully stalling, and this was to help reduce the amount of altitude you would lose during a stall. During this method, the aircraft is very close to a secondary stall, and because of that, the FAA removed the requirement for minimal loss of altitude out of the airman certification standards. And because of that, I recommend pitching the nose of the airplane down just briefly to break the stall, and it doesn't take much, only like two or three fist lengths for a second. Then, just pitch the nose of the airplane back up to the horizon, and from here, the airplane will slowly gain altitude and airspeed. And if you're in a turn, roll out and continue the recovery procedures straight ahead in whatever direction you're going. Then the rest of the recovery procedure is simply cleaning up so you can climb out faster. If you have carb heat, turn it off immediately. I usually turn it off right after I go to max power on the throttle. Then once that's done, slowly start retracting the flaps. Now here's how I recommend doing that if you want to recover a training aircraft as fast as possible. First, after you turn the carb heat off, raise the first notch immediately. Then, once you have a positive rate of climb, raise the second notch. Then, a positive rate of climb and VY flaps up. Alright, now let's go see what this looks like in the airplane. Alright, going to a northbound heading. Pitch down just to hit 60 knots to simulate that we're landing. Pitch down just for a second, there's 60 knots. I'm just gonna slowly bring that up to the horizon. And with the throttle in idle, it will stall with that nose on the horizon. Just wait for it, need more and more backstick pressure. There it is, max, relax, roll out if you're gonna roll. First notch of flaps, carb heat off. Now gently raise the nose of the aircraft up to the horizon. Keep your heading, steering with the rudders and the ailerons. You want to use as much rudder as possible. Positive rate, second notch. Keeping our northbound heading. And just patience on this. With the nose on the horizon, it will build up speed to 70 knots. Today's a hot day, so it's going to take a little bit longer. We're still got a positive rate. We're still keeping our northbound heading. A little bit more, a little bit more. Right there. All right, flaps up. After takeout checklist is complete. We'll go landing lights off, and that's how you do a power-off stall. Now, not all instructors teach this, but I recommend ending the power-off stall with the after-takeoff checklist. And that's because the power-off stall recovery procedures are the same procedures as the go-around procedures, with the exception of breaking the stall. And also, if you stall on short final, you should really go around and try again. Thank you for watching this video from the Free Pilot Training Channel. If you got value out of this video, would you hit that like button before you leave today? Also, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already before checking out this video or this playlist. See ya!